Welcome to this video. Uh, we, I'm going to be discussing the tax rate reconciliation. Um, just coming off of having tutored um, deferred tax or at least a revision to deferred tax um, for the postgrad students and then also the consultations, I wanted to sort of make a video on what were the important issues that were coming out there. And I think consistently um, the issue, the biggest issue that students had was with the tax rate reconciliation. So I want to explain what this video is going to be about and what it's not going to be about. So what it's going to be about is explaining why we have the tax rate recon, what it's meant to be doing and helping you or equipping you with the tools that you may need to prepare a tax rate recon. What I'm not going to be doing is I am not going to be giving you an exhaustive list of all of the issues that come up and all of the potential reconciling items, because the idea is that once you understand the principle, you should be able to prepare um, a tax rate recon and also recognize which items would give rise to issues in the tax rate recon. So let's um, let's get into it. So if we just think about the term tax rate recon, tax rate recon, okay. In accounting, when we are talking about a recon, what we're trying to do is we're trying to explain why two numbers that in essence should be the same are different, okay. And so the idea is that we are going to be explaining to the users of the financial statements why um, why these numbers are different. So in the case of a tax rate recon, which numbers are we referring to? Well, the numbers that we are referring to would be our expected tax rate, which is the corporate tax rate of 27%, and then the effective tax rate. Okay, So we expect that a business is going to pay corporate tax at 27%, but... Uh, when we look at the income statement and we take the tax expense divided by the profit before tax, that's going to give us the effective tax rate. That number, for example, could come up to 25%. And then what we are trying to do with the tax rate recon is we were trying to explain why the tax, the effective tax rate of 25% differs from our expectation, which is 27%. So in doing the tax rate recon, then we are going to look for things that explain why the expected tax rate differs from the effective tax rate. Now, again, tools that you need to know for any sort of tax rate or any sort of reconciliation that you do. The principle when you're doing a reconciliation is you're asking yourself, is there something in my starting point to the recon that's not in the end point? And if there's something in the start that's not in the end, then that would be a reconciling item, right? And the converse is true. If there's something in the end of my recon, but it's not at the beginning of my recon, then there's going to be a reconciling item. So all we've got to do is we've got to think then about um, whether something's in one or in the other. So when I'm thinking about my expected tax rate, right, when we calculate our expected tax, we take the corporate tax multiplied by uh, profit before tax. So anything that's sitting in profit before tax, right, if there's something sitting there that's not sitting at the end in my tax expense, then I'm going to have to reconcile. The other thing I need to keep in mind as well is that when I'm talking about my tax expense, right, my tax expense equals current tax plus deferred tax, right? So let's say there's something sitting in my expected tax, right, and I didn't have current tax on it or I didn't have deferred tax, then I'm going to have a reconciling item. Or let's say there's something that I have provided deferred tax or current tax on, but I haven't, I don't have it in my um, in my starting point, then of course I am going to have to do a reconciling item. So let's think about a couple of examples. Okay, so in our first example, let's think about something like a goodwill impairment. A goodwill impairment. Okay, now if there is a goodwill impairment, we know that that expense is going to be sitting over there in profit before tax. Okay, now we've got a Ask ourselves, right, in my end point, is there anything relating to the goodwill impairment? Well, we have, um, from a current tax perspective, there is nothing relating to, uh, to the impairment because SARS does not recognize 
group tax. And remember, a goodwill impairment is something that happens only at the group level. So therefore, we would not have no current tax on that. We also wouldn't have any deferred tax on that amount because it is exempt in terms of IAS 12 paragraph 15. Okay, so in my starting point, I have it sitting over there in profit before tax, but it's not in current tax and it's not in deferred tax. Therefore, my goodwill impairment, this is going to be a reconciling item. Okay, now what about when we have a change in the tax rate? Okay, so we know that when there is a change in the tax rate, what is going to happen is our deferred tax balances are going to be recalculated. And that is because in the future, when we expect to settle our, or when we expect to settle our deferred tax um, liability or recover the benefits embodied in a deferred tax asset, the tax rate is going to be different, right? So we are going to adjust our deferred tax balances because they, um, there is a change in the tax rate. Our current tax for the current year, I mean, it's going to be calculated at the, at the new rate, but nothing relating to our deferred tax balances would be there. So we would kind of leave that unaffected. And from a profit before tax, right, when the tax rate changes, there is nothing in profit before tax that changes because of that, because we are recalculating our deferred tax balances. So there's nothing in my starting point. There's nothing in current tax, but there is something in deferred tax. So because it's not in the starting point, but it is in the end point, I know this is also going to be a reconciling item. Okay, now... This is a question um, that I also want to tackle that I sometimes see, and I think it's important to just understand um, why the following um, situation would not give rise to a reconciling item. So let's think about, for example, if we have um, a situation, so I'm going to do it over here. Let's just say that we have depreciation that is being recognized, depreciation expense of 25. Um, and then we have a wear and tear allowance from a tax perspective of 20. Okay. So why in this case would we not have a reconciling item for the difference between the two? Okay. So if you just take a step back and you think about this example and what we would have done here, the difference between the depreciation and the wear and tear of five over there, that is what we call a temporary difference, right? And if you need a bit of recap on deferred tax, I'm going to link my videos, some of the videos that I've done previously on deferred tax. I'll even put a link maybe down in the description so that you can access that just for the, for the, the refresher. OK, but remember this year we would we have a temporary difference and a temporary difference just means that there's a difference now between how something is being treated from an accounting perspective and a tax perspective. But over time, as that sort of gets depreciated or we claim those allowances, that is eventually that difference is going to go away. Therefore, it is temporary difference. Right. And in that case, what we would have done is we would have provided for deferred tax. Now, if we just go back to our recon, right? In my starting point, I have profit before tax. I would have my depreciation over here of 25, which is sitting in profit before tax. And then from a current tax perspective, we have the 20, which is being claimed as an allowance from a tax perspective, right? So we can see there the starting point, I've got 25, but in the end point, I've only got 20, right? But that's not the full story. Because even though I have 20 in the current tax, I must not forget that that five over there, we provided for the deferred tax. So in my end point, right, the total end point there is 25. My starting point is 25. So therefore, when we have differences in depreciation and wear and tear, right, those are not going to give rise to reconciling items on the tax rate recon because we've already provided for deferred tax. Okay. Now, another thing conceptually that I want you to understand is 
right? When we provide deferred tax on any item, right, what we are doing is we are bringing our, uh, well, we're recognizing the future tax consequences of the transaction in the financial statements today. But what we're also doing is we are right bringing our tax expense right so our tax expense that's sitting in the income statement we are bringing that in line with um sort of what our tax expense would be under an accrual figure and that bringing that in line that tax expense in line with or calculated on on an accrual basis effectively what that is doing is it's bringing our tax expense in line with our expectation so to the extent that we were able to provide deferred tax, right, we do not have a reconciling item because the point of providing deferred tax was to bring our actual in line with our expectation. And if we provided deferred tax, we did do that, right? And so to the extent that we were not able to provide a deferred tax on something, right, and it differs from our expectation, that would give rise to deferred tax, as we saw over here with the goodwill impairment. Okay, so that's just a, a sort of a short recap on the tools that you need uh, to do a tax rate recon or explaining the key principles there. Um, let me know if you like this video um, and if you want me to in the future maybe do a bit more work on the tax rate recon um, but if not I wish you all the best for the week ahead and I will see you next time